Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. So at this point, a pre-spoiler season for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, it might not surprise you all that much, but we've got yet another potential pre-spoiler, or however you want to go out saying it. Now for the first few, I was definitely surprised when I saw another one. I was like, oh my goodness, they, they just keep coming. And at this point, it's just kind of an expectation that we're probably going to get these up until the point when actual spoiler season happens. Again, I could be wrong on that, but actually, in this spoiler, you'll see why I think that. Regardless, what is Thousand Face Shadow and what makes it such a deadly new card? Well, let's jump into it to find out. And actually, okay, sorry, real quick. Before we jump into it, a quick disclaimer. Yes, these are potential spoilers, as in they are not confirmed cards. They are just pictures on the internet that people post, and sometimes those pictures aren't all that great, but they do look like legitimate cards, so I'm bringing them up. So you make your own decisions on whether you think these are legit or not, and we'll find out when the actual set comes out. So with that said, now let's jump into it. So, okay, I've gone at length about the uh, quality of these photos taken, and again, I'm not complaining. I'm just making um, observations on, um, you know, how uh, lighting and focus are um, not the strong suit of whoever's taking these pictures. Regardless, we actually have seen worse quality in photos, so as long as we can kind of read the text at this point, I'm probably not going to complain too much. And actually, as we can see in this, there are three cards on top of each other, and we'll get into what that last card might say at the end of this episode. But first, we're going to focus on Thousand Face Shadow. And to do that, well, I'm not going to make you stare at this image. So on MTG.Design, I made a custom version of it. Thank you again, MTG.Design, for existing because you are fantastic. So from what could be gathered from the photo, Thousand Face Shadow is a 1-1 human ninja with ninjutsu for two blue, blue, and flying, and it just costs a blue mana. It has, when it enters the battlefield from your hand, if it's attacking, create a token copy of another target attacking creature. The token enters the battlefield tapped in attacking. So obviously this is a very specific way that this is worded, and, and obviously that interaction is meant to be with ninjutsu, which is, you know, on the card. And for those of you that don't remember exactly what ninjutsu is, it is this. You pay that amount, which in this case is two blue blue, and then you return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand. You put this card onto the battlefield from your hand, tapped in attacking. So obviously if you ninjutsu this in, it meets that requirement, and if you don't, well, it doesn't. Uh, okay, except in very, you know, very specific circumstances, like maybe you're attacking with Ilharg, which, you know, that trigger would put it tapped in attacking. Regardless, this is meant to be a card that works well with ninjutsu. And yeah, this is a fantastic card for a lot of reasons. First up, it is a 1-1 flyer for one with obviously massive upside in the kinds of decks that are going to want it. Again, in decks that work around ninjutsu, they want evasive creatures that are low to the ground, and this is an evasive creature that is low to the ground. Again, a 1-1 flyer for one, you get that out really early, and it's going to be able to get through on the vast majority of your opponents. Now, it might not be hitting all that hard because it's just a 1-1, but that doesn't really matter again because you just Junjutsu in something else that, you know, might be bigger or might have an effect when it hits, etc, etc, etc. And then, of course, this thing has massive upside when it's back in your hand or, you know, if it's in your hand beforehand. You know what I mean. So, turn 1, get this out. Turn 2, swing Ninjutsu something else and bring this back to your hand. Yeah, you just got a huge benefit from that. And then when you've got four mana, you can ninjutsu this in for something else to make a token of another target attacking creature, which is a huge effect. And keep in mind, because I actually had to read this a, a couple of times just to make sure that I wasn't misreading it, that token sticks around. It is not going away. It's not one of those temporary tokens that just says, hey, yeah, this is combat. Cool, you get an extra one of these tokens, but then it's going to be gone at the end of combat. Nope, this sticks around, and it's tapped and already attacking. 
And actually, with that, there's one very important thing to remember. Again, in order to ninjutsu a creature into play, you need to have an unblocked attacker. So when you ninjutsu this into play, you are returning an unblocked attacker, and you're making a token of another attacking creature, and that token that you're making already essentially gets through on an opponent. You've already passed the blocker's step again to make sure that you have an unblocked attacker, and now, you know, you're just getting through with a creature for free, essentially. Now, rules lawyers out there, please check me on this as well in the comments below. But I actually think that you might be able to just, in a game of Commander, again, a multiplayer game, be able to choose essentially whichever player that token is attacking. It doesn't have to be the exact same, you know, player that that original creature was attacking. I could be wrong on that, but basically, I think you basically can just choose who that token is hitting. But again, please, in the comments below, let me know if I'm wrong. Regardless, yeah, for a one drop, this thing does a ton, and it does basically everything a ninjutsu kind of deck wants to do. It's an incredible low to the ground evasive creature with massive upside. And speaking of ninjutsu, let's go through some quick examples of cards that can really benefit from a one drop like this. So let's talk about Ninja the Deep Hours, Ingenious Infiltrator, and Mistblade Shinobi. Ninja the Deep Hours is a 2-2 human ninja for 3 and a blue that has ninjutsu for 1 and a blue, so you save 2 mana there, and it has, when it deals combat to a player, you may draw a card. So, turn 1, get down your 1,000 face shadow, turn 2, swing, and yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to get through on at least one opponent with that. Then you ninjutsu this in, and now you've got a 2-2 hitting and already drawing you a card on turn 2. And speaking of drawing cards, how about the 2-3 Vidalcan Ninja with Ingenious Infiltrator that costs 2 blue-black, but again, it's got ninjutsu for some... Little savings there, blue and a black. Whenever a ninja you control deals combination to a player, draw a card. So this one obviously has potential to draw you even more cards in a ninja tribal deck, you know, just drawing a card when any of your ninjas hit. And again, another fantastic turn two play after getting in Thousand Face Shadow on turn one. But of course, there are plenty of other ninjas that I could bring up, like, you know, Misplayed Shinobi, which has when deals combination to a player, you may return target creature to that player controls to its owner's hand. There's a lot of them out there, and yeah, there's gonna be even more after this set, I am sure. I mean, actually, okay, that's pretty much guaranteed from this set that we're going to be seeing more creatures with ninjutsu. And obviously, the more and more options that you have, the better Thousand Face Shadow can become. And of course, bringing it back to your hand by ninjutsuing one of these into place is actually a good thing because then you set up Thousand Face Shadow's ninjutsu ability. I mean, just think about on turn 4 potentially getting two copies of Ingenious Infiltrator to draw you two cards anytime any ninja you control deals common damage to a player. I mean, the scenario for that is pretty doable. I mean, turn 1, Thousand Face Shadow, turn 2, Ninjutsu and your Ingenious Infiltrator, turn 3, get another evasive creature into play, turn 4, Ninjutsu, Thousand Face Shadow into play for that other evasive creature, make a copy of Ingenious Infiltrator, and now you've got two of them, you've got three ninjas hitting, and that's what, six cards? So, yeah, you can get off to some really explosive plays with this one drop. Speaking of which, of course, when we're talking about ninjutsu, we have got to talk about Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This is an incredibly popular commander. I think last time I looked, she was definitely in the top five. A 1-3 human ninja that costs one blue-black. But of course, she's got commander ninjutsu for blue-black, which essentially is the exact same thing as ninjutsu, but it also counts the command zone. So yeah, you can essentially cheat on commander attacks with this. And she has whenever a ninja you control deals combination to a player, reveal the top card of your line brain, put that card in your hand. Each opponent loses life, feel that card's converted mana cost. So Yuriko can give you a ton of card advantage while also punishing your opponents, and yeah, in the right build, you can take your opponents out very, very quickly. So yeah, I could definitely see a fantastic evasive one-drop-like Thousand Face Shadow fitting right into a Yuriko deck, especially when you know you can make extra copies of other ninjas or other big things, etc, etc, etc. And actually, there are plenty of other commanders that will want this card as well, you know, outside of just ninja tribal decks, but we'll get to those here in a bit. Because first, I want to talk about Zephyr Sprite, a 1-1 flying fairy for a blue. Now, this came out all the way back in Magic 2010, and yeah, since then, quite, quite a bit has changed. A low-to-the-ground evasive flyer is not a bad thing, but yeah, now these days, we have things like Siren Storm Tamer and Spectral Sailor and Fairy Seer. All these have the exact same mana cost in our 1-1 flyers, but on top of that, we get some extra value. For example, Siren Storm Tamer has Pay a Blue, Sacrifice it, counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. And then on top of having Flying, Spectral Sailor has Flash, and by paying 3 and a blue, you draw a card. And then Fairy Seer is a 1 1 flyer that has what enters the battlefield, Scry 2. So yeah, a lot has changed since Magic 2010, and we keep getting more powerful versions of cards, and yeah, just extra value stapled onto things that used to just be, you know, what was expected. 
And yeah, Thousand Face Shadow very well might just be the best 1-1 flyer for one out there now. Again, not only is it low to the ground and evasive, but it can also give you a ton of value later. Another commander that is probably really excited for this new card is Edric Spymaster of Trest. Edric is a 2-2 elf rogue that costs 1 green blue and it has whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. So in many Edric decks out there, essentially you just get a bunch of low to the ground evasive creatures, you know, like 1-1 one, one flyers for one, and um, yeah, you swing with them. And then you draw more cards, including more evasive creatures, and you get them into play, and you draw more cards, and maybe there's some extra turn spells in there if you're really, you know, mean. Okay, not mean. Uh, if, if your playgroup's okay with you playing extra turns, Edric, go for it. Regardless, yeah, yet another low to the ground evasive creature that can have a massive upside, Edric is definitely excited about Thousand Faced Shadow. Another commander out there that is probably looking for a card like this is Inez the Gale Force. Inez is a 4 4 flying to Jin for 3 blue blue, and it says pay 2 in Azorius, attacking creatures with flying at plus plus 1 until end of turn. And of course, on top of that, whenever three or more creatures you control a flying attack, each player gains control of a non lane permanent of your choice controlled by the player to their right. So get out your low to the ground evasive flyers, start swinging, start moving some things around, and yeah, you can pump your flyers as well with this kind of a commander. Thousand Face Shadow is gonna fit right in, and yeah, you can even make now copies of your opponent's things that you stole if they're, you know, attacking creatures that survive combat or get through. What's not to love about that card in this kind of a deck? Or of course, how about Kangi Sky Warden, a 3-3 bird wizard with flying and vigilance for 3 white blue. When Kangi attacks, attacking creatures with flying get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, and when Kangi blocks, blocking creatures get plus 0 plus 2 until end of turn. Again, hey, get out all your low to the ground evasive flyers and just start swinging. And of course, get out your other flying anthems and yeah, I mean, Thousand Face Shadow can come out early, help you get some damage through, or you know, if you've got, you know, an anthem creature in play that can help your flyers, just, you know, make a copy of that because it's going to be able to get through probably at least one opponent because it's going to be a flying creature as well. Get some more anthems out there, make your flyers even more deadly, and just keep swinging. Now, of course, I could keep going through more and more commanders out there that would probably want this card. Again, basically, hey, does commander like flyers? Cool. That's probably one that should be considering it. Regardless, I will be highlighting one other commander for a different reason. And that would be Kaiga the Tide Star, a 5 5 dragon spirit with flying, and when it dies, you gain control of target creature. Now, this is an interesting kind of a commander because actually, the well, the way that I went about building it might not be the friendliest way, and you might want to check with your playgroup before you actually build it this way. But I built a clone kind of tribal version of this commander where you basically just Hey, okay, I've got a clone. Cool, it comes into play. Up and make a copy of Kaiga. Oh no, the legendary rule it applies. Oh, I lose my clone of Kaiga. It dies. Well, looks like I got the death trigger. Okay, I'm gonna gain control of one of your creatures now, and you've got nothing to say about it. Essentially, every single time you make a copy of this, you get to steal an opponent's creature. And yeah, of course, Kaiga can get through on at least one opponent pretty easily. Again, it's a 5-5 flyer, so you swing with it. Then you use Thousand Face Shadow to make, you know, a copy of it by ninjutsuing something else back. And now you've got another copy of Kaiga, and then it goes away, and then you get to steal an opponent's creature. Sounds like fun for everyone. Okay, or maybe just, just fun for us. Anyways. Of course, there are other creatures out there that have some very impactful ETBs or LTBs that you're going to want to use and abuse, like Agent of Treachery, Deluvian Primordial, and Scourge of Fleets, just to name a few. Now, keep in mind that the creature that you want to copy has to be attacking, so making a copy of Agent of Treachery might be kind of difficult, you know, because it's just a 2-3 that doesn't have any kind of evasion, but maybe you can do it. Regardless, if you can, there's a pretty big payoff. It has when it enters the battlefield, gain control target permanent, and of course, at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. Or how about Alluvian Primordial, a 5-5 flyer, so yeah, that's probably more likely to survive in combat. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target insert social card from that player's graveyard, paying its mana cost. It basically will be cast this way for the graveyard, exile instead. Basically, hey, this ETBs, and you get to cast three things for free. And then how about Scourge of Fleets? No, it is not evasive, but it is a 6-6, so it might be able to survive combat, and if it does and you make a copy of it, well, your opponents are going to be in trouble. Because when it enters the battlefield, you return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less to its owner's hand, or X the number of islands you control. And who doesn't want another copy of a big 6-6 bounce spell? And speaking of big... I mean, I could bring up a, a number of big creatures out there, but of course, one of the biggest and baddest is Blightsteel Colossus. It's an 11-11 golem with trample, infect, and indestructible. 
So yeah, your opponents aren't going to be able to take this out during combat very easily at all. So then you're pretty much guaranteed that this is going to be attacking and you can ninjutsu in your creature by, you know, taking out another unblocked attacker. And then you say, okay, I get my copy of Blightseal Colossus and it can't be blocked again because you already passed the blocker step. So you've got an 11-11 infect indestructible creature that is already not blocked. And again, I'm pretty sure this is the way it works, but again, rules lawyers out there, please correct me below in the comments below if I am wrong on this. But I believe that you probably could just pick whichever player that you want for that token to be attacking. So basically, hey, I was attacking other player with a Blightseal Colossus. Now I get a surprising extra Blightseal Colossus that's already in play attacking that cannot be blocked. And now that player is just gone because this is 11 infect damage. And who doesn't love surprising Blightseal Colossus losses? So yeah, I think Thousand Face Shadow can be incredibly impactful in a lot of situations and for a lot of decks out there. Regardless, one more thing really quick that you might have forgot about that I did mention at the beginning of this episode, and a huge thank you to Eddie for pointing this out. But let's take a quick look of that photo again. Um, and at the bottom right, we can see part of that third card, and a couple of words do stand out. I mean, okay, in there I guess you can read the word to, uh, with, and your, but on the line below your, you know, that whatever, one, two, three, fourth line, we see the words, or should I say letters, we've got O-U-T, and that's probably the end of a word, and then the next word is payin, or, you know, it's P-A-Y-I-N, and I'm assuming there's a G there too, we can't see it. So, again, Eddie pointed out that that is probably without paying. And yeah, that is an incredibly powerful effect that we're probably going to see on another potential spoiler before actual spoiler season comes out. Regardless, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for more potential spoilers. And actually, you know, when the actual spoiler season starts, which is finally coming up uh, January 27th, I believe, is the first day of the actual spoiler season. So stay tuned to this channel for more potential and actual spoilers. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.